when I was up at Jester's house, it was a chance to get away. And, and let me remind you this. You need to learn how to get away without going anywhere. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in detail. And last trip that Bevy and I went on, we got unplugged kind of like, and man, every time I quiet myself down, I can, I'm tuning in to the station that Yahweh's broadcasting on. Yahweh doesn't not talk to you, probably. He can do that, but it's probably because you are tuned in to the wrong channel. You get tuned into the world, guess what? You will not be able to watch Yahweh programming. So there we were in, up in West Virginia. Miss Nancy puts it out so nice. They treat me so wonderful there in honor, and I, I just appreciate it so much. But as I was relaxing and trying to just shut my mind down, and all of a sudden... I was meditating on this word, and I'm gonna, what I want to do is to do a little bit different format than what I usually do when I teach because I usually use a lot of notes, and the reason I use a lot of notes is because what I'm saying, people are so judgmental, and they'll, they'll take one little thing I say if I misquote a scripture and say, see there? Or God forbid that during my teaching I put a, a six, chapter 6, and it should have been chapter 16 or something like that, Oh, my God. I mean, people are like, what's wrong? What the heck is wrong with you? You're blah, blah, and all, you know. So I, I get that. And listen, I'm going to tell you this. It, some of that bothers me sometimes. But then I remember what the disciples went through and what my Lord went through. And, I've, and I can't do anything but think I'm a big, stinking, whiny crybaby for the, any persecution that I may think I may be getting. Dude, they're not after me this morning. Y'all hear me? They didn't, they didn't kill, they take everything from me. They're not going to try to burn me at the stake. They're not going to take my head off or put me in a lion pit. So, well, you know, if you start feeling sorry for yourself about the gospel and persecution, shut up. Amen? Amen? And that's what I tell myself. Just shut up. Because the gospel has done nothing but bring abundance and wonderful life to me. I love it. And I want, to, I want to go to Matthew chapter 6 today, and I just want to give a little commentary, and this is going to be a, I, I want to say brief, but don't hold me to it. If it's not brief in your definition, then fine. But I want to talk about the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6. And I love, I love what's written in red. I love the black stuff too. But you know, in, in chapter 5, we have the Beatitudes, and then chapter 6, Yahshua is still talking. He's teaching. And he's talking about how we should do things. And in and, and verse 4, he talks about how Yahweh, listen close, Yahweh sees in secret. But he rewards openly. I believe Yahshua was the truth. He is the truth. He told the truth. So if I'm not being rewarded openly, then obviously I'm not doing things secretly. And if I am doing things secretly, because the Bible says he sees those things which are in secret, then what I'm doing isn't what God wants me to do. How many of you know that what you are in the dark by yourself is who you are? You can come to church and play, wear a suit and tie, and, and talk spiritual and do whatever you want to, but who you are in the dark when nobody's looking, that's who you really are. And it tells me that you don't really believe in God. Because why would you act like that when nobody's looking, knowing that he's the only one that is looking, and really the only one that counts? So you would be a hypocrite. He says, and so when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. That's what he says right there in verse 5. For what they like to do is get up in the synagogue and, and stand up and pray and get on the corners of the street because their motive for their reward is fulfilling in their deficit, which is part of the sin nature, the beast mode. They like to get on that street corner and get up in front of everybody so they can be seen of men. Look what I know. 
Look how smart I am. Look what I can do. Look at this. But, in, but they're, they're such hypocrites that they don't have the power to change their own life. And so what we're trying to do here is to create people who worship in spirit and truth. So when it comes to every aspect of your life, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, every aspect that God knows what you're doing, you know that God knows what you're doing, and it matters to you because you believe that God is and that he's a reward of those that diligently seek him. Otherwise, we are saying with our actions, we don't believe there's a God. What's he going to do? Now watch this. It says they have their reward. Let me tell you what the word reward means. Their pay. When you get up in front of people and you're trying to impress people and you're showing them, but in, in, when, in the dark when you're there, the Bible says the praise of men or you getting, you, you don't even have to get praise of men. If you think it's you are impressing somebody, then what happens is, I'm trying to get my tone like Jonathan, sorry. So what, what happens is, I can't do it. What happens is, they get their pay right then. That's their reward. That's their pay. Is what the, that, that's what the, the Greek word means there. You got your pay right there. Guess what? If, you get, if that's the pay you want for serving God, have at it. That ain't the pay I want. I want my pay to be well done, Johnny. I'm going for the big one. Hey, you want to go for the big one? I'm pull, the, pull it. I'm going for it all. I'm in. Win or take all. Then he goes on to say, I'm telling you, this is going to be very simple milk this morning, but I hope that it speaks something to you that will change you today. It says, but when you pray, it says, go into your closet. Now, I want to tell you what the closet is. It isn't necessarily a literal closet. It can be. It's like when Bevy and I were on vacation, well, I was in the little closet, you know. I went to Chetty's house, that was my little closet. You know, you can have a prayer closet where you can actually go and it's where you pray. But I believe it has to be beyond that. That you and I have to learn how to quiet our soulish man down enough that you can, that's your closet. It's the secret place of the Most High. It's like Pastor Joel was preaching Wednesday night about the cleft of the rock. Under the, under the shadow of the Almighty, that we can get to a place where we are secreted because it's in the secret place. It's what we do secretly is where we get an open reward. I love the word here. It says, when you pray, Go into that closet and look what it says to do. It says, shut thy door. Let me tell you what the door word means. Yes, it could be used for a door, but it really means portal, gate, opening. So in my life and in your life, what we have to learn how to do is to shut ourselves away. To get into our closet, that secret place, that place that no matter what's going on around us, we are existing free from the influence and the cares of life and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things that are pulling on us to pull us out into a place to where we want our reward right now. Pay me now. Instead of let it ride. That's probably not a good example for some people. So we're in the closet, and we've shut the portal. Another word is gate. We shut the gate. Ain't nobody going out, and ain't nobody coming in. And then he says, and then you have a relationship. You pray to God. And this is what most people think prayer is. Most people think that prayer is something like a uh, formal prayer. Even the prayer that we're fixing to look at briefly this morning, there's that word again, we think it's a form of thing that we, that we pray. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You know, it's amazing how we can recite things and not have a clue what we're saying. The word hallowed, how do, we, how do you say the word hallowed when you're quoting the Lord's Prayer? When you're quoting it? Hallowed. The word blessed, when you read a Bible verse, you don't say blessed, do you? Blessed. Blessed is he. Hallowed. And what we do is because we, we have this mindset that it's really like poetry. We're, just, we're reciting this poetry. It's a beautiful prayer. I had a guy tell me the other day, he said, man, I just, oh man, man, I was on the way here and, and I heard Elvis sing, how great thou art. <laughs> I said, well, do you know that when you die, you don't go to heaven or hell? <laughs> how great. <laughs> that, that, that shook him up. People get so attached to certain things and they love these things and, you know, a certain song, when I, man, Elvis sing, how great thou art. Man, Elvis was not a Christian. Elvis was a drug addict. He sold out any form of Christianity, even though all of his gold albums were gospel. So what? He saying he was anointed, Johnny. Well, guess what? He might have been anointed, but he was in the wrong place. Seen it happen. I believe if he would have served God, he wouldn't have been popular anymore. You hear me? If he really served God, they would, have, they would have said, no. Now watch this. I need and want to be rewarded openly. I want to have my open reward. I want people to see the glory of God upon my life. I want people to see that God is so good and great that he blesses us. To be rewarded openly, especially on that day when everybody thinks all these things and they don't really know who you really are till you stand up on that day and they say, hey, Johnny, come here. My, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And the world's going to know that I secretly had a relationship with him. That don't mean I don't spread the gospel. Y'all talking about, I'm talking about my prayer who I am, who I am in my daily meditations. I don't need to pray some special poetic prayer. I talk with God, and I walk with God, and I tell him things, and he speaks to me. And most people have no clue what that is. They can get the word. Oh, Johnny, I tell you, that's a good word. But yet they have failed to allow that word to change them. The reason that I believe that I, me, why would I know anything? I'll tell you why. Because I understood the, the power of the secret place. That when nobody was looking, I was serving him. Y'all getting this? You ain't going to get nothing from God if you don't live with him in the secret place. And in that secret place, I've been real honest with God. I've told him what I really was thinking and what I was really doing. How many of you know he already knew it? You know what the Bible says? You ask these things. He said, I already knew you. I already knew it before you even asked. In other words, he already knew it before you even confessed it even. Because he knows everything. Now watch this, y'all. Don't use vain repetitions. It took me a long time not to do that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When I was a kid, Brother Etheridge, at Central Assembly of God, used to pray amen. Say, get up and testimony, amen, service, amen. And he just said, I want amen. Thank God, amen. He, he had that filler. Amen, 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 amen. Wonderful person. I'm not being critical of him, but the fact is we feel like that we have to say things. You know, usually when I pray in front of people, I'm usually teaching them. Lord, I pray right now as me and Todd sit here that you will put it upon his heart to pay for lunch. And I will, you know what I mean? Or I've got an agenda. I have this agenda that while I'm praying, I'm really teaching. So really what I found out, that I wasn't praying at all. I wasn't talking to God at all. I was talking to whoever could hear me pray. So what happened is my prayer life usually consisted of praying to people. And yet my personal life suffered in my relationship with God. And then I realized this, that if I would humble myself and serve God, he would hear me. You know, I know that 
Fourth of July, I saw a lot of people on Facebook put, you know, they quote Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. How many of you know he ain't talking to the United States? That was not written to the United States. Y'all listen to me real close. Well, you don't think we can repent and all that? Well, uh, not really. At this point, I personally believe there's no hope for America, y'all, except Yahshua returning. But you can't, when, when Paul was called to go to, you know, go to Macedonia, and the Bible says, go thou to Macedonia, he ain't talking to you. I got to go to Macedonia. I read the Bible. Go to Macedonia. He ain't talking to you. So you can't just pull out of, the, of a scripture something and say, I claim this scripture for me. And for America, I claim the scripture for America. Now, I'll be honest with you. I can't tell you that if that happens that maybe God would do something. I, that's up to God. He can do whatever he wants to. I'm telling us this. What we're not, if we're not careful, we will build our whole theology based on something that somebody else is talking to. Have you ever done it? Hey, yeah, you come up the head of the line. You walk up there. No, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to him. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to think somebody's talking to you and they're not talking to you. And I think there's a lot of people who think that their whole b- belief system is based on things that people are talking to other people about in the Bible. He's talking to a specific time in history of the nation of Israel in Solomon's time. Not America. So in my prayer life, he says, don't be, don't be using these vain repetitions as the heathens do. I mean, we have these cliche scriptures that we go back to, and now they form this whole belief system. And when I quote John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should, not will not, should not perish, but have everlasting life. I understand that when Yahshua was explaining to Nicodemus about eternal life, he only gave him two options. Why didn't he go ahead and say that he should not go to hell and burn forever, but have everlasting life? You know why I use the word apolomo, apolomai? Because the word means destroy fully. There's two options, but when you, in your tradition, in our traditions, and I'm talking to not just us. Y'all understand that, right? We have formed a belief system out of misquoted things, ignorance of what the word even means, and we read right over things based on our misquoting and thinking that certain things were written to us and about us. Did that make sense to anybody? He said, don't use vain repetitions like the heathens do. i got to be honest, the older I get, the more I'm, more I'm repeating myself, evidently. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you know, the more older I get, also, the more I repeat myself. Didn't I just say that? Did I say, did I, say I repeated myself? You can't remember, Exactly. That's why it's so good. I repeat to him, he, he thinks I've said it for the first time. Listen to this. Because that's what the heathens do. Why? Because they think that they shall be heard because of all the stuff they can talk about. Knowledge puffs up. The thing about knowledge, it makes you think you're something when you're not. You think other people, I know people give me all this knowledge and they're just misquoting things all right I'm getting close and this is what he said don't be like the heathens you ain't got to pray all that junk and 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 be repetitious and over and over you ain't got to talk to God all all that much I think God sometimes told me sit down shut up hey okay okay Because he knew and knows what I have need of him for asking. And it took me a long time to mature beyond Marley Ray's years. Because this is what Marley Ray does to her mama. Mama, mama, mommy, 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 mama, 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 mommy, 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 mommy. Don't she, Josh? Hey! Now, I'm not saying Misty's God. 
but I'm saying that's a baby. God, I'm going to do it. God, help. God, I'm going to do this for me. Oh, I'm going to go do it. God, look, we, there's a time you're going to have to just believe God and enjoy and praise Him because you know He's going to do what He said He's going to do. If you'll just believe Him. All right, y'all ready? He said, this is how you're going to pray. And I, I taught on this a long time ago, but I want to give you just a brief commentary on something that will help you. Because I think who Yahweh is, what the gospel is all about, what our life is all about, is included in this prayer. It just sp spells it all out about what you can expect in your walk with God. Number one, he's a father. My first revelation of who God really was, beyond being just a kid and Jesus and God and church and all that, the greatest revelation of who God really was, when it was all said and done, for an initial introduction, he said he was a father. Actually, we started this church based on that principle, the fatherhood principle. Because fathering, you know, is a, and we talked about it so much, you know, wrote the song, Where Are the Fathers? We, you know, we see that the number one thing that men in prison have in common is they were fatherless. We know that there's a great love deficit that's created by it. And sometimes it's hard for people to love their father because a lot of fathers never grow up to be a man. They're still little boys, and they're doing their thing, so they forget that, look, hey, this ain't about you anymore. This is about those kids. That's why God gave babies parents. Did you understand that? So they could teach them the right way and could give our children some type of idea that the Heavenly Father is like. That's you, what you're supposed to do, to show you what the Heavenly Father is like. No wonder people don't want to serve God because they think He's going to be like you. I've had it hundreds, I was going to say thousands, that may be stretching it, but I can say hundreds of times, people who didn't want anything to do with God because of the way their daddy treated them. That's a shame. And I understood, and I learned to find out who my heavenly father was. And I actually was introduced to that when I had my children. When you have your first child, not everybody does it that way, but I got a taste of God's love for me when my children were born. Now, first thing he says you want to know that God's a father, and you need to know where God is. How many know where God is? He's in heaven. The word don't literally even, I mean, doesn't necessarily just mean a place that is beyond on the sides of the north, somewhere out there. It has to do with elevation. It has to do with high and lifted up above all things. My father, you understand what that means, who is above everything. I like to put it this way, the uncreated one. And when it's all said and done, he is the only one who's going to determine the end result for me. Yeah, but what about the economy? He's above that. Well, what about my wife? She, he's above her, believe it or not. He ain't scared of her. What about my job, my boss? Don't worry about it. God is in heaven. And he's sitting on the throne. And it's not empty. He's still on the throne. So he said, man, you got this father, and where is he? He's the, he's the biggest, baddest daddy in the world. My daddy can beat up your daddy. How many of you know that my daddy can beat up your daddy? Yeah, but don't, what are we going to do? What if this happens? There's a mentality and a faith that has to be developed that your father loves you like a father does, not an earthly father, and that he is above everybody. That's good news to me. You mean I have favor of the one who makes every decision, who determines the end result of everything? That's my father and he loves me? Boom, I'm in. 
Y'all hear what y'all she was saying? When you pray, you've got to have that mentality. And remember, prayer isn't saying, now lay me down to sleep, pray God, you know, or nothing like that. You know, it's not Jesus, thank you for this food and all your, I mean, to me, that means nothing if you don't believe and understand that God's the Father. And let me tell you about the Father's love. He will whip your butt. When little Dicky breaks the window with a baseball that his daddy told him not to throw against the house, mommy may, may be the one that comforts him, but daddy will take a belt on his butt. That's what daddies do. And don't think your father won't chasten you. And that chastening is the proof that he loves you. If you're not corrected, you're not loved. And people tell me they want to be loved, but they, but they don't want to be loved because when you love them, guess what they do? They'll walk out of your life in a lickety split. Are y'all got verse number one? Maybe the first part of that, right? Watch this. He's our daddy, father, all that implies. He's above all things. And watch this one. Our father which art in heaven. So you said it. You did it. I told you. Hallowed be thy name. I, and, and, of course, that's not wrong to say hallowed, but what I'm saying is sometimes we get into the verbiage and the way to pronounce it and stuff, and it doesn't become real talk to us. Blessed is the man. He's just talking about being blessed. But it says blessed. No, it says blessed. You pronounced it blessed. Hallowed. It means he's our father. He's above all things. What was the next one? He's a, yeah. Hallowed be thy name. This is, this is people don't get it. They blow right past it. Oh, his name's Hallowed. Hallowed be thy name. They don't understand that he has a name. And I'm not going to get into detail. Remember, I told you I'm just going to, I'm commentating without teaching and proving with Scripture. I got all the Scripture you want. Hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. The name of God is important. The name of your father is important because it's in that name that all the way, the things, and the purpose and the intent of God is, is all inside of that name. That's why his name ain't Jehovah. That's why his name ain't God. His name is Yahweh. He said, now this is my covenant name and I won't keep it for generations. And because it's, and people, people always want to apply that to you know, the Messianic Jews want to say it's this. The other people say it means that. Other people say it don't really matter. The fact is, it's holy. He said, when you pray, you pray, your name is holy. I recognize your name is holy because it's through that name and by that name that I understand your purpose for me is that you will be all and in all. What did he say? He said, I am that I am. No, I will be in whom I will be. What is he doing? God is trying to reproduce himself in human beings. If you don't understand what the name means, then you're going to believe that when you die, if you, if you accept him or, or believe that he existed, then you get to go to live in heaven forever. He's saying you can't pray like that. You have to know what the name is and make it holy and important. What are you talking about, Johnny? What's the next verse say? Thy kingdom come. Holy is your name. You're the Father. You're above all things. Your name is holy. So what do you pray? You don't pray what, and i got to give Chester credit for this. Okay, Chester, here it is. One time you get credit, it's mine after this. Chester asks people, people just come to his back porch. From my neighborhood, they just come back here and sit, and I would too. People start bringing that banana pudding out and all that, you know. So Chester says one of the reasons that people believe that when they die they go to heaven is because of a, a prayer that they pray every night before they go to bed and he had these couple people there and he said let me ask you something did you ever pray a prayer every night before you go to bed as a kid and they said yeah he said pray it and they quoted it just like this lay me down to sleep I pray the Lord, my soul to keep, watch this one, if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul to take. God bless so-and-so, 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 
Amen. And I hope I get that mini bike. Amen. Instilled in our very core from a child is a belief that if you should die before you wait, going to praise the Lord, so take. And I said, you know what, Chester? That's genius. Because that's what people think is the real Lord's Prayer. That ain't the Lord's Prayer. You know what? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It don't say it, does it? Why wouldn't he say that? I said, man, you know, you think about it. No wonder, kids, I used to get scared at night, man. I didn't like my leg hanging off as a kid, oh, did you? Because something would snatch it off of there. And somehow, if I could get under the covers, nothing could bother me. Like it's some kind of force field or something. All it was was a blanket. And, it's, and then if we went to like a funeral or something and then got home at night, it's like I told you, man, I've seen house coat, house road robes hanging on the door move because if you look at anything long enough with fear mm, you ever seen something move like hey what was that that thing's moving what is it it's just your house coat it's the pants you laid across there can you imagine your parents telling you hey have a good sweet dreams you might die there's a chance you could die before you get up in the morning I mean <laughs> No wonder I'm screwed up. My mama made me pray a prayer. I mean, go get down on the side of the bed. Get on your knees and do like that. If you die, please take my soul. That ain't the Lord's prayer. You know why? You know why he didn't say in John 3, 16, you know, that thou, sh that thou shall have everlasting, uh, shall not perish, and not say, you're going to burn in hell forever and ever, because it's not true. Don't you think if he's going to teach you how to pray, why would he say, my Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, which means it shows the gospel. Why didn't he say, and if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Why didn't he say that? Because that ain't true. And that's one of the most simple things. What did he say? How do you pray? If you're going to pray, don't pray. I mean, I think if that's true, that's what we should be praying every day. If I should die before I wake, pray the Lord my soul to take. Now, it's amazing to me how in the daytime we can just get whatever, do whatever we want to do. I'm going to do this. If I feel like doing that, I'll do that. All of a sudden it gets dark, you know, you're, no, I pray the Lord will take you. I should die before I wake up. You, you know, I've done that. People get fearful at night for some reason. The Lord's prayer is not, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because he knows that the kingdom is coming. I'm going to be with Jesus when he comes. Well, he's going to be here. He's going to establish his kingdom here. The new Jerusalem. Do you want know to John say, I saw us ascending up to the new Jerusalem, the city four square, 1,800 mile cubic miles. What, what did he say? I saw the New Jerusalem come down. But when your mind says a certain way, you've been taught, now if I should die before I wake and all those things, it, your tradition won't let you, it'll, it'll just simply read right over those kind of things. That's why you got me. And that's why I hope other people are going to have you. He's saying, look, thy will be done on earth, watch, as it is in heaven. Now, of course, what do we mean by that? We know that we have to do God's will in our heart. How many of you know that we are earth? You're dirt. You came from the dirt. I came from the earth. We all came from the earth. And God's will should be done in my earth. God, see, it says thy will be done in earth more than on earth. It doesn't say on, it says in. So I, I like to believe it means in me, that my will be, God's will be done in me. On earth, watch this, as it is in heaven. Now, I know that there's a heaven. Some people don't think I believe in heaven. I believe in heaven. I believe that Yahweh's there. I believe Yahshua's on his right hand. What that exactly is, I don't know. I've never been to the third heaven. I don't know what's up there. But I do know that it's there in whatever form. And I do know this. 
that it doesn't necessarily in this scripture always mean that let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What do I want the will of God to be in me as it is in heaven in reference to the word that I used for heaven a while ago? I want the will of God that's above all my circumstances to be done in me. You hear what I just said? Does that make sense to anybody? Ah, oh, thy will, the way it is in heaven. God's up there, he's ruling, and you've got to obey God when you're up there. No, what I'm saying is that's true in me, but I'm also saying that I want the will of God, and I'm going to tell you, God's will is better for me than my will for me. I've learned that. Thy will be done in earth as it is above all things. So what, what happens, Johnny? Man, there's, if, there's, if there's lack in my life, I want God's will of being above lack and poverty to be done in me. I'm trying to make this clear. Is anybody hearing me at all? I want what the, the heavenly things, seated in heavenly places, that ain't just a, a chair next to Jesus. Hey, can I get up? Can I sit there? No, it's a way that we live in our life that we are above the average Joe. That we don't have to live like the sinner does. We don't have to live like the unbeliever does. We don't have to worry like the sinner and the unbeliever does. We don't have to fret. We don't have to be sick. We don't have to be poor. We can have, ha, be happy and have joy and peace in our lives. Let that be done in this earth. Can you all hear me? So it's beyond just, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, of course, the next thing he says about his will being done, that heavenly will manifesting itself in a people on the earth. I love it. Give me my daily bread. Years ago, when Yahweh put this in my heart to build, I didn't want to build it. I didn't want to build a building. But really, our, our rent on where we are is more than our mortgage payment. In the beginning, it wasn't. I don't even know except thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven is the only way that we're even in here. You want to talk about unbelievable, miraculous, it, I don't know. And I remember I was praying and I told Yahweh, I need a million bucks to do what you do want me to do. Then I was like, well, no, 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 you need a million bucks. And I used to go back here when they were building this and they had dirt piled up and these old weed things were all in there and I'd, I'd go back behind there. And <laughs> I'd cry. I'd cry out to God. I'm like, man, uh, it was so heavy on me. What am I doing? It's, uh, I know none of y'all have ever done that before probably. But when you sign a note for a million bucks, maybe that'll change you. I said, anybody want to sign it with me? Yeah. So I'm asking God, and this is what somebody gave me, a million-dollar bill, still on my desk right now. And I felt like that this is what Yahweh spoke to me. You want it all at once? Or you want me to divvy it out to you? I said, well, you probably need to divvy it out to me. Because when you get it all in once, how many of you know it won't last as long? And in that, I learned to love my daily bread. I love that daily bread. I bought a couple of steaks the other day from Win Dixie. Two dollars off steaks. Y'all know what kind those are, right? Please take these ugly, slimy steaks right here. We'll give you two extra dollars off if you'll get them off of our hands. So I bring them to the house. My wife walks by there. She sees that little red tag on there. So I put hers in the frying pan. She said, that don't smell right. <laughs> I was like, that don't smell right. 
because I don't know how old it was, but it wasn't bad. They weren't bad. I thought, man, I've been hurting all day. Have you, honey? Josh, are you okay? Josh, come over. He grabbed the refrigerator open and he ate all my leftovers. Well, uh, congratulations, son. <laughs> you know that that daily bread is the best bread. That stale stuff that my sister Charlotte used to make my sister Janet eat ain't good. That daily bread, and what it is, it's in a place of peace knowing that I'm doing the economy of God, and I know that, that it works, and I know God's going to take care of me every day. Anybody here else bear witness to that? I know that to allow him to give me my daily bread and to understand the principles that you live by in order to get that and make that happen. And if I'm obedient in that and put God first in my life, guess what? Give me my daily bread. I'm here to get my daily bread. Why? Because now, not with a, an arrogant attitude, but with an attitude of confidence and thanksgiving before God. Hey, woo, I'm here to get my daily bread. And I can thank him for it when I get up in the morning before it even comes because I know that he will not fail. Divvy it out. He'll divvy out more than you could ever save. Then he gets to another part that's so important about being successful and get you well done. I'm teaching you what Yahshua said. Hey, how, you want to pray? This is how to pray. Lord, I want to get my well done. This is how you do it. Lord, I want to be successful in life. This is how you do it. Lord, I, will, I need to walk in that power. Here, here it is. Forgive us our debts is conditional. Yahweh, I want you to forgive me of my debts. Forgive me of my sins. I confess them to you right now. It's conditional. Y'all hear me? You can talk all day all you want about God forgiving you. I want to tell you, John, I pray God and he forgave me. No, he didn't. If you haven't forgive others, y'all look at me. That's my, this might be why people are having so many problems. Because they are, are out of fellowship with God. They are dislocated saints. They, they are, maybe you haven't been cut off from the body, but if you're dislocated, how many of you know if long enough you won't get blood or anything else at that hand? I don't know why my life sucks, and I don't know why. Of course, I'm telling you, you have unforgiveness in your heart. How in the world do you expect God to forgive you if you won't even forgive the person that's done something that didn't cost you his life? You, call, you crucified Christ. Your sin crucified Christ. It killed Yeshua. And you can't forgive somebody for looking at you wrong or sitting in your chair or whatever it may be. Listen. I know that I am of God and have the fruit of the Spirit and the, and the power of God. I'm in good standing with God when I have the power to forgive others. I used to have to learn and do it and let my emotions catch up later because I would forgive them. But guess what? They didn't deserve it. Well, what was so great about me to think that I deserved it from God. Yeah, but God didn't. You didn't hurt God. They hurt me. Look, now we're, this forgiveness thing will open up the door to find out who you really are. Because this is what you're doing. You're just full of pride and arrogance thinking that you're so special. You want, to, you want to, the red carpet coming down. That's why people get mad at me when I just start telling things about the gospel. Who do you think you are anyhow, Mr. Big Stuff? I'm not anybody. I'm just, I quoted three scriptures. What, what are you getting mad at me for? I'm telling you right here that your Jesus said if you don't forgive people, then he won't forgive you. And if you're in unforgiveness, guess what? You up, you don't walk creek without a paddle. You have been dislocated. Well, I don't like him. I don't like her. I'm like, yeah, okay. You just, you're just avoiding having to forgive them. 
You hear what I just said? You are avoiding having to forgive them. And what you're avoiding is your well done and any blessing in your life. Now, here's one that happens. If you don't forgive, have you ever thought about this without us just praying it? You know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as Forgive us our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those trespasses, forgive us. And that, I used to know the word trespass. That's how they used to say it, you know. Trespass was like, well, they didn't come in my yard. That's what I thought trespass meant. It means when they did something wrong to me. And listen to what he said. And lead us not to temptation, but lead us for the kingdom come for the glory of man. That last verse is something really interesting that I don't think anybody stops and even looks at. He said, Yahshua said, look, Sandy, when you pray, Lenny, pray to God, the Father. That's what he said. Don't lead me into temptation. Now stop right there and think. You're going to pray. Yahshua was telling us when we pray, we need to pray to God that not to lead us into temptation. What? What? Think about it. God, don't lead me into temptation. I'm thinking, why would God lead me into temptation? Now, some of you right now have a picture in your mind of what temptation is, and it's your favorite one probably. And why would God... He's going to lead me into temptation. I thought the Bible said God tempts no man. So why if in all of this, all the things he could say, why did he say right after don't forgive, I mean forgive, and all these other things, don't lead me into temptation? I said, man, I got to check this out. And this is what he was preaching two Wednesday nights ago. It's before I went to West Virginia. Was that three Wednesday nights ago? When he was preaching this, and I know I'm not the only one. When I'm preaching, y'all get, you know, the Spirit of God explodes in your heart, and, and you probably don't hear any more of the message, you know, and because God's speaking to you. Not, not that you're playing video games on your phone. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, and it, I had to get off track in a while, and then I had to really, so I could continue to hear what he was saying, I had to just write it down so I wouldn't forget it. Because not only do I forget that I say things over and over, I also forget things that I'm trying to remember sometimes. And I've learned, write it down. So I wrote that thing down, and I left the next day, I believe. And, man, I was meditating on that thing, man. You just, what you said to me, that just, you know, it, it, it put a spark in me, and, and uh, it opened my portal in my secret place. And, and so... I began to meditate on that all the way up on the airplane and all that. And that's when I, when I got up there all of a sudden, I'm thinking, why? Why did Yahshua tell us? It's a warning almost. Notice it's not like a warning. Don't leave me in temptation. Lead us not in temptation. When you pray to your Father in heaven, pray. Lead us not into temptation. That just blows me away. I, y'all act like y'all not understanding what I'm saying. Maybe it's my own revelation. Do, Hey, you better ask God not to lead your butt into temptation. Are y'all getting it now? Huh? You better pray when you pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom of the power and the glory, Lottie. I'm Irish now, right? Lead us not into temptation. I didn't know how I read it. I was like, man, you better pray. You better forgive those who, and if not, and then you pray, don't lead me into temptation, Lord. So I'm like, what temptation is you leading me into? And then I discovered it. They had been in Jerry's too for five dollars. Don't lead me into temptation. That ain't what it means. The Greek word means this. Watch me. Y'all looking at me? Y'all looking at me? Adversity. You better pray, Yahweh, don't lead me in adversity. Because if you don't do what he tells you to do, guess what he's going to do? He's going to lead you right into adversity. And crap's going to happen all over you. You're going to get into all kind of trouble. I almost made it through a message without saying something, didn't I? I'm telling you, it's going to hit the fan. You're going to say, why? Because if you get off course, 
He's going to say, okay, I can fix that. I can fix that. Everything's hunky-dory till you get caught. How many of you know that? Once you get caught, all of a sudden, Marty, I feel sick on my stomach. I was doing something years ago with a bunch of guys, illegal. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. Man, we were, we were tough guys. I had my 1964 Ford Fairlane 500 with a 289 in it. It wouldn't smoke the tires that good, but if you rolled it down the hill backwards and you could pop it in, you could smoke the tires. Some of you might appreciate that. Man, we were, we were departing the scene of the crime. My window was down, even though it did have air conditioning, even though it was, all, it was second, you know, it was uh, wasn't built in. It was that piece, you know what I'm talking about. Aftermarket. Had the window down, man, smoking me a cigarette, drinking me beer. I don't know how I was driving. <laughs> Going down there, 3 o'clock in the morning, pitch black. Nobody was around. And right across from the place of the scene of the crime were these old houses in Columbus. You know, they had front porches on them. They're sitting right there near the old Mill Village, you know, Mill Village homes. And as I was driving, I was like, man, it was, uh, you know, blankety, blankety, blank, blank. Because some reason, the more I cussed, the tougher I felt. Oh, sorry, you freaking And all of, all of our messing around, uh, I heard somebody say this. This is no lie. I got that tag number. I said, what'd you say? I didn't say nothing. Did y'all hear that? I said, I heard. I got that tag number. Well, my buddies didn't care. It was my car. And they, ah, don't worry about it. I'm, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, that's good for you. We came to a stop, first stop sign, and when I tried to put my foot on the brake, my leg was doing that. Mr. Tough, blankety blank guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> When you get led into temptation, all of a sudden, all that stuff you thought, you know, we're going on, God said, I'll show you some adversity. You know, I'm going I'm to fix that. I can make you sick of your sin if you want me to. You know what I told him, God? I want you to. I want you to. He said, and he said, deliver me from evil. So listen now, Lord. <laughs> I'm trying to get my Irish accent going. Lord, that sounds more like your ex-husband, Barbara, than it does an Irish accent. <laughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I know what it sounds like now. Look, you don't get it right, Johnny. Let me tell you, he's telling you, I want to tell you what, what your father, you know, that father who art in heaven, hallowed be his name, and oh, all this stuff. Let me tell you what he'll do. He will lead you into temptation. You better pray. Don't lead me into temptation. Don't lead me into, don't lead me from the evil because you know what? When he, he, is the, he is the maker and the creator of the evil. Oh, that's going to go good on, on Eustery. I'll post it tomorrow for you. Maybe nice you read your own Bible, but I probably ain't in your Bible. And he uses that evil that he created to straighten your butt up. <laughs> what's wrong you ain't even forgiven nobody man that's the basic he that has been forgiven of much loveth much if you don't if you don't have if you don't appreciate the forgiveness of God then you're not going to love God or anybody else I want to tell you when you got that old time religion as they used to sing you makes you love everybody why because you have been forgiven I'm in you're forgiven I forgive you too you ever done that? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm, yeah, I'm in free. You can be in free too. Come on. He said, you better pray this. Deliver me. From, don't leave me in temptation. <laughs> are y'all getting this at all? I, I'm trying to make you understand it without using Scripture and all that today because people don't believe any of the Scriptures I use anyhow. That ain't what it means. Lead us not in temptation. I just started busting out laughing at the same time. I was scared. I was like, ha, ha, ooh. You all with me? <laughs> ooh. Yeah, it was funny, man. I, Yahshua said, hey, look, and before I go here, 
because it's the next the last verse or it isn't the last verse in the Lord's Prayer official Lord's Prayer he said you might want to pray hey don't 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 lead me into adversity he ain't leading you to some temptation he's taking you down the frozen aisle at Winn Dixie to see that Ben and Jerry's on sale he ain't taking you down there somehow you can fulfill the lust of your flesh he gonna take you somewhere that you're gonna wish you never liked ice cream and you'll hate ice cream the rest of your life you do it God's way he'll let you have some ice cream we got the ice cream honey. I already ate it Yahshua is warning us to pray and ask him please don't get my tag number please don't leave me in the temptation deliver me from evil don't leave me in it don't let me be victim of it don't let it rule my life let the heaven stuff be manifested in my daily life let that kingdom come let that will be done in this earth as it is in heaven are y'all with me today I'm almost done briefly Then he sealed the deal with the last part of that scripture. Who, who can quote it? For thine. Forever. Let me tell you this. When you pray, you better make sure that God knows that you know that this ain't about you. I had a Facebook friend tell recently, well, I used to study the scriptures, and but then I realized how close the Old Testament was to ISIS. Yeah. So I don't want to serve a God who is like that. Well, guess what? There ain't another one. You don't want to serve a God like that? Tough. There's no other one. Well, I don't like the way that God did that. So what? It's not... Who are you anyhow? Who am I? When it's all said and done, he, he wanted to make sure that you know and you want to make sure that Yahweh knows that you know that, this, that you know, instead of the, 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 almost the poetic thing, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And they always throw in another ever and ever. And if they were from Alabama or Georgia, they'd say, Amen. For thine, let me tell you what, this is what he's saying to you. You better know that this ain't about you. This ain't about your glory. This ain't your kingdom. You ain't a king. You got no power. And all the glory goes to him. You better get it right when you pray you better pray in that way. Matter of fact, how did it say it at the beginning? It says, when we pray, it says, and after this manner, after this manner, it means in this way. It means on this fashion. In this manner, pray. What manner? Of understanding everything I've just taught you today. And if you'll do that, then he won't lead you into adversity. And he won't have to put the angel on you. How many of you know the angels? Remember the angel's name? Thanks a lot. Huh? No? Who's the, the mean angel? Abaddon. You know, I spent how many hours trying to teach you all this stuff. Like, Y'all going to get led into temptation. I'm joking about it, but I'm going to tell you what. Goodbye. You stream.